on today's episode of Health High Sex and My Boss. All the highs and lows of our weekend away on the coast. William's banging on about his bloody ironing board again. We answer society's biggest question, how do you eat a Pringle? And there's a dilemma about getting a bit frisky on the front seat of a car. Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, how do you deal with living with your in-laws for months in between homes? And, as a faithful... Should I stay friends with someone who gives off traitor energy? Gosh, do I give off traitor energy? Mm. I think I do, because when we came be to traitor. yours, whenever it was, last year, I think, and we played the traitor's card game, everyone assumed I was a traitor. I was a faithful. Yeah. Have you, are you up to date on it? Yes, but yeah. by the time this goes out, it will have finished. That's true. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not usual like the ants, are we? William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert and just literally everywhere at the moment. At the time recording, you heard you on Radio 1's Newsbeat this morning. Yes, nice to be on. No, we're not Jordan North. I'm more five-star bistro. You're more, ah, bisto. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of your best ones in a while. Well, there's Evie's, but not from the traitors. You never know. Well, it could be. I don't know. Uh, but thank you to Evie. Thank you. And for any of our non-English or British listeners, bisto is a type of gravy. You are like God at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, omnipotent. I remember that from Ari. <laughs> Oh, sorry. You haven't remembered it very well. Impotent, no. I'm no, an, I'm, I'm not impotent. I'm an, there's nothing wrong with being impotent. No, I know, but I'm not. I'm an, I remember it from GCSE, RE. Omnipotent, you're everywhere, aren't you? Omnipotent, yeah. Omnipotent, does yeah. it mean you're everywhere? Yes. Yeah. You really are. Well, I'm like pret a -Mandre. Yeah, but they only have pret a in London. Yes, I remember when I was filming years ago in Belfast for a TV series, I thought, I'll just go to Pret. Not a single one. No, they, they've got them in like Manchester and Birmingham. Mm. But Greg's everywhere. Yes. Mm. Which are better, I think. And the coffee's better. Okay, well. The, the coffee from Greg's is very underrated. Is it? Mm -hmm. Well, how lovely. Did I tell you when um, producer Ben and I were doing our Cardboard and North? Yeah, I know. Who? Cast your mind. Pr um, cardboard and North, when yep. you were off on holiday and we were touring uh, with Cardiff, we had a Greg's in Cardiff. Did you? Yes. What did you get? I got a vegan sausage roll. Did you actually? Yes. I always go for the chicken oval bite, the sandwich. The chicken oval bite? Yeah, Mexican oh, okay. chicken oval bite and a sausage roll. Yeah, why not? Pull yeah. the ripcord. And you know I love a glazed drink. I know. Who doesn't? Mm. Uh, anyway, where are we? Who are we toasting to? Well, I think, would you want to do the debonair? I'll do the gin. Oh, <laughs> We'll talk all about, in a minute, our lovely trip away to Alfriston, to uh, Nancy Pelosi slash Alex Pulitz's gorgeous hotel. Oh, it was amazing. Not an ad, but it basically will become one. Why don't we toast, whilst we were there, on the Alfriston pub crawl that you made us go on, Jordan? Mm-hmm. We met two lovely Gene Divas, Scott and Joe. What was the pub called again? I can't remember. That was pub number three yeah. at that point. So if you are looking for a beautiful weekend away, we would definitely recommend going to the Star in Alfriston in Sussex. Yes. There's loads to do and there's three great pubs literally down the road and I decided before... As well as the hotel. Before we went for tea on Saturday, mm. I was like, we'll go, on a little, we'll go on a little bar crawl. And <laughs> what were their pub? Oh, it's going to bug me. Sorry, Joe and Scott. Um, uh, to, to, anyway, to them. To them. This is to you. And indeed, everyone, the, the whole village of Alfriston, including Alex and Olga Polizzi, for having us. So thank you. Thank you. Mm. Oh, oh, that's nice. It was a great weekend, wasn't it? Was, it? Do you know, I it felt was great afterwards. As it was described, wholesome. Very wholesome. Yes. I said wholesome. Didn't yes, you I? did. I think that's okay. I just stole your description. Yeah, it was great. I read loads as well. Did you? When? Yeah. And we went back for a nap. Oh, I see. We were in separate rooms, by the way. We weren't there. Yeah. You were in the room next to Interconnecting, though. Interconnecting rooms, yeah. I noticed. Although um, his, his door was locked, not for want of trying. Used, yeah, it was good. Apart from everyone taking piss out of me all weekend, because apparently I was talking about the rest of his entertainment. Oh, my God. So you're like a walking billboard. You know what I'm like when I get into something? Yes. When I get into something, I don't shut up talking about it, but I'm really into the rest of his entertainment podcast. Okay, good. With, I know um, you've mentioned it on this before. Yeah. So I was like, talking about it all weekend. Yeah, nice. I also noticed when we were ordering um, any, whether it was breakfast or, or either of the dinners that we had there, you are so impatient 
And I do I sort of I do get this. So when the waiter goes, right, you're ready to order. It and no, I'm so- go, Stuart, what would you like? If Stuart or Mikey or me go, ooh, I'll have the you got so irritable. Because it's because I get hungry and I, and I and I'd hate to come across rude, but we were there. We knew what we were ordering for a good ten minutes, mm. and then when the waitress or waiter comes over, you all start pissing about, umming and ahhing, and I'm like, I'll go first and I'll just say what I want because everybody's going, oh, for twenty minutes you were like, I love the, uh, I I love the the lamp. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the lamp. Then they come there and you go, oh, oh, are you getting started? Are you get? We've had all this. 10 minutes ago, stop pissing about, be decisive, and get your order in before that big table gets to order in because then we're going to be waiting another 20 minutes. Right? I like Pete, it, right? <laughs> were you thinking about my Buna? Were you thinking about my Buna? <laughs> Don't start doing James Gordon routines. I would also like to just whilst we take this opportunity whilst talking about menu etiquette. When you do go to order, all you need to say is the, the sort of the main ingredient. So you don't need to, this is, you didn't do this, don't panic, but just generally, you don't need to go, I will have the roast pork with the sage and onion stuffing and the yeah, jus. You, just, you just go, I'll have the soup and the pork, please. Who, who said that? Go on. No, no, no one. I'm just thinking that this would be a good opportunity to uh, give some take-home shareable content. Yeah. For the for the G and Divas, um, but yes, that is how you order. And also, you don't really, if it's a booklet menu, you don't need to open your booklet to point uh, unless you don't speak the language. You yeah. can, should really be able to remember soup and pork. You can maybe open it slightly to refresh your memory as they're one diner away from you. Uh, but then it's much more sophisticated to say soup and pork, please, or well, indeed whatever you're having. Can I just say as well, it's good etiquette if you have got a bit of a cold that if you're sneezing in the middle of the night to try and keep your sneezes down to a minimum. All's rec- all's Did you hear me blow? I heard you blowing in the morning, in the afternoon. <laughs> in the morning, I was half awake, and all I could hear was... <laughs> and then Mikey going, Will you be quiet? I've been on site all bastard week, and all I can hear is you fucking sneezing. Achoo. I was like, getting told, Mikey. Yeah, I'm sorry, I did. Thanks, George. Are you up? I am now. That's literally what it was like all weekend. Sorry, I, I did have quite a severe cold, um, which on the Friday was absolutely fine. It was only Friday evening. I do think it was maybe it was to do with the old sort of the old gorgeous beams that there are. I wonder if there was stuff in the beams. Um, although I was pretty bad at home actually when I got home on Sunday, but uh, yeah, it, it sort of came on Friday evening. It turns out as well from our weekend away, I've been uh, saying one of my favourite starters wrong my whole life. Yes. Yeah. Now, I haven't, annoyingly, I forgot to actually look into why you say this, but you say... Scallop. Ah, and it's scallop. Is it, though? Yes. But it's S-C-A-L-L-O-P, scallop. Yes, but when in English does how the word is written on the page mean how we say it? It's like Shrewsbury, not actually Shrewsbury. This is going to open a can of worms. It's Shrewsbury. It's not, though, is it? It is. It's not. Yeah. Bista. Bychester is how it's written, but you say Bister. Bychester? Yeah. It's Sca- yeah, by- It's not Bychester Village, is it? No, it's Bister. Scallop. I There's think, no S in I it. I think up north you say Scallop. I might be wrong. I might, this might be wrong. Well, there is an S This might be egg round pan all over again, but Scallop. 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 Um, but yeah, we, we had a great weekend. And I did and order the scallops. Yeah, so did. Yeah. So something fishy did touch my lips. Yeah, you did, and I had the scallops. But that's mainly because it's scallops. quite meaty. A couple of other things. Yes. Um, it, it's great in the morning. You ring and they bring you a coffee up. Oh. Yes. Oh, that was so... It was. Thanks for sorting it out, by the way, but that was so nice. You ring up, you go, morning. They go, and this their phone manner is great. They go, hello. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, that's not revolutionary. I'm like, morning. And they're like, can I get a, an Americano brought up? Yes, certainly. Four minutes later, five minutes later. Americano for you, sir? Yeah, thanks. Oh. They're so, they're so nice. They're so nice. Yeah, they're... Up north, like, hi, can I have a coffee? You want a brew? No, sorry, you'll have to come down to get your own brew. Stick a broom up my ass. <laughs> Which we found yes. out. Yes. So... I said at one point, Jordan asked me to do something. What did I actually do? I can't remember what you asked me to do. So we on yeah. your knee. No, I can't remember. But I, you then, I said, oh, well, why don't you lie down and I'll fan you, or words to that effect. Yes. And you said, oh, that's such a southern saying. In uh, in the north, we'd say, stick a broom up my ass. 
Yeah. So you, I think I asked you to get me some, and you went, why don't you lie down and I'll find you? And I was, it was at breakfast. And I said, the northern version of that, I stick a broom up my house because my mum would like bring my tea in. Mm. I'd go, oh, can I get some red sauce? She'd go, stick a broom up my ass <laughs> every time. Or my dad, I'd say to my dad, what did my dad would be like, make a brew? And he, he, I'd say, what what did your last slave day have? And he'd always say, answer him back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lie down and I'll fan you. Yes. Also, we should talk did about... Your, did your parents ever say to you growing up, if you didn't eat your food, they'd go, there are starving children in Africa that don't have any food, so eat your whatever it was, lasagna. Yeah. And I used to then shout, well, send it to them, which I'm not sure went down well. What well, was the right thing to say? That does sound like something you would say, but because I were greedy, I ate everything then. I, yeah. I used to have two teas. Yes. Yes, you'd go around your auntie calves. I'd go around the auntie calves. We've yeah. been doing this too long. <laughs> and, and they used to make peanut butter and toast before bed. Really? Yeah, we used to have that before bed with a glass of milk. Wow. Yeah. Well, no wonder. My dad, my dad wasn't very, I know you're not meant to say this. Going, he, no wonder you podged you eating this before bed as he were buttering my toast when I was about 11 year old. <laughs> not good for you, this son. He so, was an enabler. What's that mean? He was enabling your... No, no, no. He'd be like, have some fruit before bed. Anyway. Well, now it's better to have nothing before bed. Mm. Mm. That's true. Um, well, you also did, Mikey asked for it, in one of the pubs, I think in pub two, uh, on our pub crawl in Alfriston, you did the Guinness joke. The And reminded me of, I couldn't, I, without spoiling it, because we can't do it here, I knew half of the payoff. I could have forgotten how we got to that payoff. Um, and, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's, so <laughs> I, I, I did my world-famous or infamous Guinness joke in front of Mikey and... Um, Chris. Chris. And what's Stuart's exec... What is he? Merit. What is it? Literally one week you'll uh, learn this. You, it was your idea. Chairman Emeritus. Chairman Emeritus Stuart, um, who's looking after things while Ben's away. Um, I did it in front of him. And it, it made me realise how rude and dirty the joke is. So, for context, we did this joke when we were in Dublin a couple of years ago. On the Guinness tour. On the Guinness tour. And I told my Guinness joke. And we actually decided to cut it from one of the episodes because it's so rude. Even mm. for this podcast, it's it's so rude. Uh, but I decided to do it then. And it went down pretty well. I've got a great picture of Stu laughing. <laughs> We've got a great picture of you doing it, I think. So many g and Divas come up to me and like, can you tell me the Guinness joke? And I could, sometimes even in a pub, I'm like, it's a bit... Well, maybe there's maybe there's an opportunity at some point coming up later this year for us to do it in a safe space. Mm. You never know. Also, we should talk about Chairman Emeritus Stuart being an absolute ruthless, ruthless Monopoly deal player. Oh, uh, well, I had retired to bed to be ill at this point. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh. Well, was, clearly my presence was... Oh, yeah, I didn't notice. No. Yeah, absolutely So wiped... tell me, what happened? He won, I believe. He wiped the floor with us. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. He had a good hand. He did. Times he loves, said that. Loves capitalism. Yeah. <laughs> so that happened. What else What's that? What else got on this week? Well, um, I need to... I've, I'm sort of... Starting to set the wheels in motion, but I mentioned last week, I teased that I've never really talked about my ironing system, have I? Okay, yeah. Um, I'm going to bring in my iron, or my ironing system. But it's it's a whole, I probably need to get a courier, because it's not it's not just like, I mean, an iron itself is, is a fairly cumbersome thing to transport on London Underground. How big's your ironing board? It's huge, and the whole thing's built in. Are you joking? So I think we'll do it as a little bit of a... A demo, but I will do that at some point because I can't. I could describe it to you, but it won't do it justice. And maybe I could do do ironing. Uh, mm, no, I, I do iron. But what? I, I, yeah, I mean, I do iron in. Okay, but well, maybe I'll teach you how to do a proper shirt. Okay, I know how to iron a shirt. I love. Well, ironing. do you? Let's see. Which where do you start with? We should have an iron off because I use starch. Yeah, that's fine. Let's have an iron off. But no, but you use. Spray starch. Yeah. Mm, no. If you're going to use starch, put it in the machine. Has your iron got a plug in the bottom of it so you can wrap the cable around and plug it up at the bottom? Yes. Um, where, do, where, do, <laughs> where do you start on a shirt? Uh, are you, I think you meant to start on the sleeves, but I usually start on the front. No, start on the back. Why? I'll tell you why. Oh, for God's I'll sake. tell you why when you bring it in. No one's bothered. I bet you we get people that are desperate to know about how to iron a shirt. Right, okay. So we'll do that. Do you get, have you got the little net tea towels when you iron over walls and stuff so it takes the shine off? I have a special plate that sits on the iron. Oh, Jesus, wept. How are you not single? 
I've had this iron system for 10 years. This is how I've always ironed. How often, how, how often do you iron a week? Two, three times a week. So two or three hours a week? Oh, I do it for more than a few hours. Oh, God. I iron everything. You know, if you stay still long enough in my flat, you get ironed. Do you iron your duvets? Yes. Stick them in dryer. Well, we do, and then we iron them. Oh, for God's sake. We get all creases on them. Okay. Anyway, keep people tuning in. I could iron a few things. We, should, should we say that we are in a new studio? Can we? Yeah, we are in our We've new moved. Stu- we've moved upstairs. Produ- what? Well, don't say, because I thought if we move, we don't tell producer Ben where we've moved oh, to. Oh, yeah. We never need to see him again. Oh, yeah, that's a good. We're in a completely different completely studio. Completely different part of London. It's, yeah. It's bigger. Yeah. Bigger and better. Right, can we move on from ironing, please? Okay. Let's do Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat. With our Jordan, and if a giggle is what you seek, you're sure to love Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week. Cha cha cha. Okay, Gene Divas, what do you call a Russian with three testicles? <laughs> and I'll tell you the punchline <laughs> after the break. Thanks for sticking with us, G and Divas. Um, it's now time for Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week before we go to your questions and dilemmas. What do you call a Russian with three testicles, William? I don't know. Who do you nick a bollock off? <laughs> <laughs> Funny. I've had a couple this mm-hmm. week, so let me just do a couple more because I'm getting loads from G and Divas that are sending them in. So I think it's only fair that we do it, but that was my favourite. Lisa Shep sent me this. A mouse goes into a music shop and asks for a mouse organ. And the shop owner says, you're the second mouse to come in today and ask for a mouse organ. And the mouse replies, yeah, that was our Monica. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's nice. <laughs> I was in shoe shop this morning trying on a shoe. And I said to assistant, it's too tight. She said, try it with tongue out. I said, it's still too tight. <laughs> Now, <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Now, look, with Valentine's Day coming up, we want to hear oh, your Adam like that one. <laughs> we want to hear your romantic tales of trepidation. Mm-hmm. Anything, Gene Devers, from a first date faux pas to a proposal mishap, like Jordan's friend Scott Clarkson, who had the ring in his pocket. No, that was Rick Walker. Oh, was that Rick Walker? Who's yeah. Scott Clarkson? My other best mate. Yeah, but what did school. he do? What was the story attached to him? What hasn't he yeah, done? Yeah, well, okay, fine. <laughs> He's got a thing for... I can't say No. <laughs> Hello to Scott. Hi, Scott. Yeah. We, we want to hear all of, your, uh, all of your dating mishaps, unless, of course, it involves igluing, vabbing, or bukkake. We've had enough of those because we are not a sex podcast. You can send them in to help at sexandmyboss.com, so we're going to do a Valentine's Day special. I'm not bothered about I'm not, I'm not bothered it's on the same day as my birthday. Really? No. Don't matter. I don't, don't make I'm color. about to order your... Uh, Birthday present. Oh, don't bother. Don't get me out. You don't no, me you're, you'll like this one. Oh, what is it? I'm not telling you. It's a surprise. Tell me. No. Please. I don't like surprises. All I'll say, and say is it's not an ironing system. Okay, great. All right, let's go on to listeners' problems and dilemmas then. Okay, this is from Kate with a kiss. She's kissing us, Kate. Hello, William, Jordan, and the rest of the Help I Sex at My Boss team. I'm writing with a big question for you. What is the etiquette for eating a Pringle? For some background, my friend and work colleague decided to reveal one day that she eats Pringles in a very unusual way. My friend, who I will not name to save herself from embarrassment, will get a Pringle, lick the flavour and spices off it, Mm -hmm. put it in her mouth to chew up, and then baby bird the Pringle mush onto the lid of a Pringles can. Oh, that's a bit weird. She's a degenerate. As if this isn't disgusting enough, she has mastered this technique to collect 12 regurgitated Pringles onto the lid. Oh. She will then flatten the moist, mushy Pringle into a Pringle pate. That's disgusting. What is the correct etiquette of eating a Pringle? Well, it's not that. And does it involve the Pringle pate technique? No. Keep doing what you're doing, Kate. Kate, it's very simple, and this applies to so many things. You open your mouth, you pop it in, you close your mouth. Okay. Uh there's a meme going around mm. recently that I think is brilliant. Somebody said on Twitter they seen someone eating Pringles outside and they're like, what the... Like, a Pringle is an indoor crisp, and I totally agree. You don't just go out and about with kind of Pringles, do you? It's like, it's an, Pringles, even the little mini ones, you either get them on a plane or a train. A Pringle, you can't just wander... You know, like, sometimes you'll wander out and have a bag of crisps. Pringles are indoor well, crisps. So nobody should be eating Pringles in public. I totally agree with that. Second thing... <laughs> Go back a couple of Sorry, years. and what is an outdoor crisp? Just a bag of crisp. 
But a Pringles, it's somebody tweeted it. I'll, I'll find the meme. I'll find the meme because I was like, oh my god, yeah. No, no, I get, I get, I get what the meme is doing. I don't need to waste five minutes of my life whilst you can't find this. I can't find the meme, but anyway, that's the thing. <laughs> and then second thing is. Uh, um, do you know you're naturally funny? You're just so weird. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're, just, <laughs> you're a very odd person, but you are naturally very funny. <laughs> That's really sweet. Thank That's you. A pleasure. Second thing, mm. going back to goo pots. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when I said Yes, I'm, and they I sent to, you loads. I had to get rid of bloody those goo pots mm. at New House, but they come in handy for ashtrays, putting nuts in and stuff. Also, and I've been sent this a few times, a Pringle lid mm. fits perfectly over a goo pot. So if you want to take a bit of yogurt into work or something... Or I don't know. You could cling film it with a rat master. Or you've got to do a, 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 a semen test at the doctor's. You could do it in a goo A pot. semen test at the doctor's? What are you and doing that for? On, and put a little... I haven't put a Pringle... Think of it. Third thing. Yes. And, I, and I, I've not done my research yet. I just know this. The guy who invented Pringles was actually buried in a Pringles tube. He was buried? In a large Pringles tube. Was he? True fact. Google it. Is that a true fact? That's a true fact. Is this a bit it like did... Walt Disney being cryogenically frozen? Not true. No, true fact. That. Fourth thing. That's absolutely disgusting. You, you can't, <laughs> you can't, I can't, you do lick a Pringle sometimes. No, you don't. In once, but you don't mush it up and then you pop it in. Do you ever do the Pringle duck? No. Have you ever done? You can also turn one Pringle at the top of your lip, the other one at the turn it upside down, and you do a little duck. Okay. But a Pringle's an indoor crisp. Okay. If anyone from Pringle is listening and you do not send us any Pringles <laughs> enough for this, I will be livid. I prefer Doritos. I've said it before, and I, I wouldn't lick it. a Doritos either. I lo- oh, no, I love a Doritos. What colour? Doritos. Uh, I used to be a cheesy one. When I was, is that the orange one? When I was skint at uni and couldn't afford cheesy chips or kebab, I just used to go in corner shop and get a big bag of cheesy Doritos. Right. And I've let them on the way home. <laughs> Times are hard. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, but I do like cool original now. Okay, fine. And the red ones, what's the red But ones? either way, any etiquette for a crisp. The only thing I would say with a Pringle, or any sort of large crisp, you could do this with the Doritos. Is Doritos. If it's, if it's too big... You could, a bit like a bread roll, snap it. If it Pringle might flake a bit too much because it's a bit thin. Doritos might work better. You could snap, eat a bit, and then eat the other bit. You've got the new thicker ones now. In fact, you know, I should do that for a video. There you go. Freddy? Yeah, Freddy, right. it down. Freddy. I'm on it, darling. <laughs> I'm on That's it. That's my mother. Freddy here, viral Freddy. Hi, no, I'm viral Freddy. You haven't found the voice yet. <laughs> I'm... Viral Freddy, I will make you go viral with my videos. <laughs> Everything's just fabulous, darlings. <laughs> I am Viral Freddy, and I will make your videos go viral. I am on it, Stuart. I am on it, old boy. I am on it. Viral Freddy is the one who makes Williams videos. Yes. That's my new impression of him. Is it? He's very, like, thespian and camp. And... No, he's not a thespian. No, I know. He's, he's not gay. camp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it, William, darling. Leave it with me. I will be there very soon to film your videos <laughs> and make you go viral. Anyway, Freddy will do this as a video. This is from Lara in Atlanta. Dear William and Jordan, but mostly William. Sorry, Jordan. Oh, cheers. I love your verbiage for polite rejection. Verbiage. Verbiage. What's that mean? Um, parlance. Language. Words. Sure. The line, I, I enjoyed what I had, a response to a not-so-great meal, is gold. Whenever you shut Jordan down with a definitive full-stop no, is gorgeous. Apparently, I say to you, no. Oh, OK. Uh, it got me wondering, what are some other elegant ways to express no thank you or humble gratitude in social situations? Your podcast is so much fun to listen to, and I thoroughly enjoy your etiquette videos as well. Again, sorry, Jordan, you're wonderful too. I appreciate your expertise and advice. Lara in Atlanta. Okay, so nice ways to tell someone... No, thank you. No, thank you. You just say no, thanks. Oh, I'm all right, thanks, mate. Oh, cheers, pal, I'm good. I don't have capacity right now. But it's saying it's something I can review in a few weeks' time. Is I'm it... just giving examples. I'm not oh, saying. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's something I've used recently. How do you? Uh, I think did they also mention a compliment, a humble. 
No, but we, I mean, we can broaden it out if you want. So what, if someone gives you a compliment, what do you say? Oh, just thank you. Oh. That's it. You no. don't need to go, oh, this old thing. Or... I disagree. You go, oh, shut up. No, no, I haven't. No. Stop the beer and <laughs> not lost any weight. <laughs> oh, thanks. Just, well, no, you just say thank you. Or you don't need to then give them a reflex compliment. I'd like say, oh, and I love your top too. Oh, okay. You All you do is you remember. Let's just say, pretend I like that top that you're in. If I complimented that... Say, go on, I like your top. Acting. I love your top. I'm a really big fan of your Mikey too. <laughs> He's a good lad. <laughs> <sighs> the trouble is, I sort of knew where that was going. <laughs> He's a great lad, thank you. Um, <laughs> I love your top. <laughs> I love your cardigan. Mm -hmm. You would simply say, thank you. And then later on, remind yourself to say, oh, and your quarter zip is very nice as well. Okay. For example, or, or whatever you wanted to compliment. What was the other question in there? To express no thank you or humble gratitude. Yeah. The, the hum so you were right. Humble gratitude. It's just thank you. Okay. That's all you need to say is, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Or, oh, that means a lot. Or you could maybe like... Hi, William, darling. We'll have that as a video as well. Oh, God, here we go. That will be a video soon, William Darling. Fabulous. See you all soon. I'm going to work on that impression. Yes. I'm going to and, work on that. And indeed all the others. This is from Anonymous. Hi, Jordan and William. Big fan. And he, he's getting an impression because of that comment on the radio on <laughs> so, so Freddie has access to my Instagram. And Jordan on Radio 1's uh, Instagram, you did a and salt TikTok. burn murder, murder on the dance, on the dance floor, floor thing, which was highly original. And you... <laughs> Their most viewed video of the month, actually. Is it? Yeah. Well, that's because your hips. Always the simpler, simplest of ideas. But anyway, yeah. Kevin. Anyway, you were dancing around the BBC, mm -hmm. and you told me off. You went, "How dare you comment?" I didn't say how dare you, but I went. I said, "Oh, that. thanks for commenting." I went, thanks for commenting. In block capitals, campus Christmas. It got the most likes and replies <laughs> on Radio One's channels, and it turns out it was Freddie. Ha! Ah, yes, it was me, <laughs> darlings. It was me. <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea I'd even written that. So, anyway. Okay. I don't know whether Freddie was deliberately commenting as me or he meant to comment as himself, but he forgot which account he was on. Oh. But anyway. This is from Anonymous. Hi, Jordan and William. They're big fans. My friend's girlfriend recently dumped him after a long-term relationship, leaving him rather upset. Oh. They planned to move abroad and to save money, so he sold his car, leaving them with just her mini. However, after she'd been dumped, my friend's now ex-girlfriend ditched the move abroad and, as he was now car-less, agreed that he could continue to use hers for a bit. Fast forward a month or so, and my friend has firmly hopped on the rebound train and is living his best life as a single 28-year-old in his prime. Oh, bet he is. Shagging like rabbits at that age. He's since met a new girl, and they've been at it like rabbits for weeks. Oh, well, really? Is that what he says? <laughs> yes. See, I know it. I know it. I mean, I've just, I'd like it. I'm sure. Oh, yeah, okay. The new girl asks my friend if he can pick her up from a party. My friend, being a gentleman, obliges and goes to collect her. On the journey home, the new girl decides to show my friend just how much she appreciated the free lift. Go on! And begins to orally pleasure him. Wow. <laughs> Caught up in the moment, my friend... <laughs> Caught up in the moment, my friend doesn't notice the variable speed camera on the bridge and gets flashed coming off the slip road, all whilst getting a good time gobble from his lady friend. The problem my friend has <laughs> is that the car is registered to his ex-girlfriend's mum. <gasps> He is now panicking that his ex-girlfriend's mother will receive a letter from the police where she'll receive both a fine and a five-by-five five picture of her daughter's ex getting a Sunday sloppy <laughs> from a stranger in her car. This is the best one we've had in ages. Does he message his ex and warn her of the fine or hope that it'll go away and the fine doesn't turn up? Either way, he's got to give the car back at the end of the month. Let's hope he'll pay for a valet at least. Kind regards, Anonymous. Anonymous, um, I would sweat this one out. Hmm. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure saying that these days, uh, it depends. They just want the license plate. I think they've they? got they've got two weeks to get you. I think. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to be delivered. So it's got to I, come to you. In two I'd weeks. sweat this one out. I wouldn't say hi. Um, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd probably text your your other half, mm. your, your ex. Sorry, I'd text your ex, be a gentleman, and say, look, I've been flashed on the way home. Uh, I'm willing to pay the fine. But then I wouldn't mention that you're getting a blazer in the car. No, I I'd think you see, could. Yeah. Because also, you, if the, I, again, I haven't ever had a speed fine or a camera thing, 
so I don't quite know how much picture they see. But mm -hmm. if it is just the registration plate, you're only then opening yourself up for a prop. You know, you might actually make it an issue when Sometimes it's not an issue. Sometimes they send the pictures, so oh, you they? might be able to see it. But it'll be fine because it'll just look like you're driving on your own. Yeah. She's got red down there. Mm. Yeah. Right. You never know. So that would be my advice. Thank you, everyone, for your questions and dilemmas. You can listen and watch us every Tuesday and Friday. And in our next episode, we'll find out which contestant of Series 2 of The Traitors is a G&D. And, I mean, I'm desperate to know this, we'll discover if we're 2024 hipsters. Remember, if you need our help with something, then we'd love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com. You can DM us as we're on Sex and My Boss on the socials. Or you can write to this man here, William Hansen, who, in the fullness of time, Promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self seal envelopes. The address for that is on the website sextedmyboss.com. See you on Friday. Mm -hmm.